The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Let's get into this fight that happened two days ago. Teofimo Lopez, he's one of my favorite fighters as far as like the young, talented fighters. Uh, he shocked the world when he beat Lomachenko, made it look pretty easy. He had a slip up against Cambosis, but then he bounced back and went up a weight class and beat Josh Taylor. A lot of people didn't think he was going to beat Josh Taylor. He took those belts from Josh Taylor. I think he took like three of them. And he was fighting Jermaine Ortiz two days ago. And this fight didn't go down like I thought it would. I thought it would have been like a showcase for Lopez. Uh, Super Bowl weekend, you know, he had all eyes on them on Thursday night. But I feel, I feel like during the fight, Lopez was chasing Ortiz a lot. And I guess that was the game plan by Ortiz to, like, be elusive and not stay in the way of Lopez. But he was chasing him, chasing him, chasing him. And he wasn't able to string together those combos like we know Lopez is able to do. And... Some people thought Ortiz got it, but Lopez was able to get the unanimous decision. I thought Lopez won it just because he was the aggressor, and I feel like he was getting the harder shots off. Uh, I'm starting for you, Chris. What were your thoughts on this fight? Lopez was able to retain his belt. A lot closer. Um, the punching was a lot closer. Um, they pretty much averaged the same amount. Um, 78 landed from Lopez, 80 landed from Ortiz. So it's pretty much there. The power was around the same amount. Uh, these 30% each, around 32 from Lopez, 30 from Ortiz. I think the only problem with Ortiz in this fight that I seen, he ran, a, not ran, he was on defense a little too much. A exactly. little too much, just a little too much. If he'd have brought it back down just a little bit and stayed, because he was countering, he was throwing punches. It wasn't like he wasn't there to fight. He just was backing up a little too much. And in fights, when you're watching it, Lopez was being more the aggressive. If he could have changed that a couple of rounds, it probably would be a different outcome. But it was just a little too much on that back foot. A little too and that, much. And that doesn't look good to the judges' eyes when you're on backpedaling that much throughout the whole fight. And like you said, I think that's lost in the fight. It was like such a slim margin, mm -hmm. like it was such a close fight that 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 visual of him backing up probably didn't look good in the judges' eyes, and that's probably why Lopez got the nod. But what were your thoughts, Steve? Um, yeah, I think Ortiz. They they both have it from what I think is for Ortiz, which I think he did a good as far as defensively. If you are able to even out the fight throughout you have to have burst of trying to get ahead and punch more and then you know you might you know get a stretch ahead throughout the rounds but like you said he was um if he was a little bit more aggressive he would have uh persuaded the judges i think there was a discrepancy on a judge uh uh some ridiculous um score i can't remember exactly what it was yeah, but, the, the cards were all over the place as far as yeah. I like mm -hmm. none of them, none of them were alike, which is you know a, a topic for another day, judging in all combat sports. But I digress. Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> and um Lopez, it seems like his plan, well, one of his um tricks he has up the sleeve or his favorite ones is it seems like he was trying to back him to the ropes or into the corner and um catch him on the outside with a hook uh, on, on coming out of the diff, uh, try to catch him on which way he's going to cut out of the um, angle of the uh, corner or it ropes. And um, I felt like he relied on that too much. And I felt like Ortiz relied maybe on defense, maybe too much for somebody to make a definitive win. For sure. Did uh, any, did any of y'all see his uh, post fight, uh, interview Ortiz or Lopez Lopez no I didn't what did he say oh man he went on it was almost like an unhinged rant he was talking about uh, I can't even remember off the top of my head but he was I mean he, he was uh bringing up I don't even want to repeat it <laughs> he, he was he had some a couple slurs in there and he was going off on a tangent talking about because he was like reacting to the crowd booing and and whatnot and he kind of 
it didn't really make sense. I'll uh, have to send out the link so y'all can see that afterwards. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know where. Where does Lopez go from here? I mean, you got Devin Haney fighting Garcia next, and Devin Haney has a belt in that division. I think. I don't think there's a. I think it's a. You got four belts in the division. I think. I don't think there's anybody with more than one belt. So, I guess you see uh, Lopez maybe fighting Haney next. F the winner of the Garcia Haney fight. Yeah, there's ability there. You got Tank still. You got. I mean, that division's got like four or five fighters there. I don't know if they all want to fight each other again, but you know, there's like four or five fighters right there. And then you could still, you know, take another tune-up fight because this was really um wasn't a knockout show it was it was a hard fight this was a hard fight so you can probably take down take it down a little bit and fight a uh upcoming you know competitor that you you don't have that's not big name and try to get a knockout there to bring up your stock a little higher yeah we know that uh, it might be like a mandatory defense that he has to do but i feel like this is the era where you gotta have the super fight baby i mean make the money like we you don't need to see them take a, a fight in between and take a, a fighter that we know he's probably gonna get by. Let's let's get let's get to it. I mean, these kids are ready right now. They're like in their mid to late twenties now. Like when you're in their early twenties, you know you want to see them have some warm up fights. But let's get to the bag, man. Like give the people what they want. Like right. Steve, I don't know. Would you like to see him face like maybe like a Devin Haney winner of the Garcia fight next? Uh, definitely, and um. Me, I've always known the popular bo boxers, but me stepping my foot into knowing the, the whole parameters of who the competitors, but sometimes everybody might not know. And uh, me liking boxing, I, I'm just now hearing about Lopez. So I don't know if it's true. Y'all don't know, but uh, uh, maybe, um, you know, um, he his stardom, maybe he's not as big as these other people. And um Maybe he does. Do you think he has to be on the back foot of these people that have a household name more than him to wait for their? I mean, he's pretty there. popular. He's, he's up pretty there. popular. He's up he's there. Pretty, yeah, he's up there. I, I feel like that. I feel like probably like the only people that have a bigger name and like around that weight class area, just because of Garcia, because of his social media presence in a tank. But other than those two, I think he's like right up there. People know him. He could sell out. I think he could sell out somewhere. Like he could be the main event, and he has been. So um, that's why I'm saying there's other guys that he can fight as well because he's he can he could draw a crowd himself. So he can fight some uh, coming um, opponent that just you know mandatory um, who's actually pretty well that we haven't heard. And he can help someone else get on the map, you know. And that's how I see it too in boxing. It's not always finding the big names because there's other guys in other big and small cities that have like 25 and 0 that we never heard about. So this is a good opportunity that they get mandatory to fight. And now we can see the showcase on a big level against someone like him. So um there's a lot of fights out, fighters out there, a lot of big fighters in a lot of places that we don't. They're not big names, and this, these are opportunities where these guys get built and they fight them. We're like, hey, like Ortiz. I don't know if a lot of people knew Ortiz, mm. but Ortiz threw a good fight. I mean, he threw 400. He landed um, pretty much most of his punches. Um, he was right neck to neck with Lopez, you know, so neck to neck. And this is someone that thought he won the fight, actually. So, you know, that's big for Ortiz that he'll get another good fight because we saw him. On this level, so you know, I'll take that back because I, I'm starting to remember now. Uh, Lopez pulled a script out of uh, uh, Prince Nassim, the little walkout. I, oh, I, yeah. I, I, oh. I for, okay. oh, yeah, so we yeah. got to even bring that up. Uh, yeah, what were your thoughts on that? Uh, his uh, his walkout, he had the, the circus Olay. <laughs> I dug it, I dug it. I love the entertainment, man. It's all about the entertainment, you got to sell, man. It's entertainment. Yeah, I mean, you come up with that. I thought he was going to knock him out, but he had a performance. But some of it wasn't like on him. Like you said, uh, Ortiz was defensive and on the back pedal. So, I mean, it wasn't much he could do to press the issue more. But, like, you come out with an injury like that, I thought he was going to get him out the paint. But mm -hmm. it was what it was. You got to have that that flair, that, that showmanship. And, you know, I'm sure it went viral. I'm sure the clips went around social media with him coming out with the circus. And yeah, in Vegas, it's Super Bowl weekend. Let's go, Let's man. It. Let's get it. So yeah, but like like I said, Lopez Lopez will be all right. And 
we'll see what they have for him with the, the, his next fight in the future. Thank you for checking out this Haymaker Combat Sports segment. This full episode can be found on the Haymaker Combat Sports YouTube page and in audio form on all major podcast platforms. Until next time.